Hawaii. When people hear that word, they think tropical resorts, luau's, and beaches. And while I'm not going to dispute those all make for a good time, the team and I have a different game plan. We're going to dive into a little Hawaiian culture while chasing wild pigs, spear fishing on the reefs, and if we're lucky, catching a wave. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. Greenway Outdoors Greenway Gear Checklist is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. For today's episode, we're going to be harvesting wild pigs, and here's what you're going to need for today's Greenway Gear Checklist. Number one, rugged clothing. Pigs do not have great eyesight, so camouflage isn't necessary, but they have a great sense of smell and a great sense of hearing. So anti-smell clothing can be helpful. Number two, a gun. Today I'll be using a 270, which is a smaller round for pigs, but it is very effective. A lot of people like to use something bigger, like a 30 odd six or a 300 Win Mag. Now that we know what we need for today's Greenway Gear Checklist, join us on our trip. We are starting off this trip by targeting wild pigs with our buddies Daniel and Steve on the beautiful island of Maui. Do you see the nice open flat up down there? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go, you go down there with Steve and you'll go and hunt pigs down there. The pigs really like to hide in those nice tight cactuses to make holes in them. And I sleep like there a, during the day. Like a cave kind yeah, of Yeah, kind of a cave. It's super nice and cool underneath the cactus during the day because it gets super hot. Okay. And then you guys go down there. It's, eh, it's okay. And then me and Jeff will go where it's really nice and good, and we'll go and hunt pigs okay. and goats down there. <laughs> I don't know why you thought Jeff would be the guy to team with. I like, I like his plan. I like, yeah, I yeah. bet you do. All right, so I, I and I get Steve. Yeah, Terrific. you get Steve yeah, too. Yeah, Perfect. So, all right, well then, let's get started. Head out that way. Yep. All right, good luck, guys. How big is the biggest pig that you've seen on the island? On the island? I haven't seen any big ones, but I've heard stories of 200 plus pound pigs. So nothing bigger than that? I'm sure there is. I just haven't personally heard of any. Because I'm, I'm thinking it's got to be really big if Kyle's going to be able to hit it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm excited for this hunt and we better succeed because if there's not a giant pig out there, there's no way he's going to hit it. I don't know. They're pretty quick out here. They are fast. Yeah, add yeah. that variable in. Yeah. They better be sitting still. <laughs> He's gonna have a tough time. <laughs> this hunt would mark the second time Steve stepped outside with the intention of hunting, while Daniel is super experienced from growing up on the island and pursuing game from a really young age. Our plan was to separate and cover more ground, overlook large expanses of land where the pigs frequent, and wait until dusk when the pigs are a little bit more active. I am fascinated by the weather. It was like, you can see a thunderstorm over there, sunny over there, it was sprinkling here earlier. You can see all different forms of weather sitting in one spot. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how we'll move in. Hopefully we'll uh, have good weather tomorrow when we're getting bacon off that boar we shoot tonight. Yeah, you know what's actually funny though? With boar, you don't, wild boar, and boar means male pig, so we might shoot a you know, wild sow, which would be the female. The wild pigs do not have bacon. Really? Yeah, it's the, the, the muscle and fat doesn't develop on the stomach area, which is where the bacon comes from. So they don't actually have it, but be the best pork tender one you ever had. All right. 
The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, Motor Trends back-to-back -back truck of the year. And by Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. As the day moved on, the shade and the shadows moved along with the sun and the sky, which in turn created a little movement with the animals. Finally, I got a glimpse of a wild pig. Only problem is he was surrounded by Daniel's family's cattle, so I was gonna have to move in close to make sure that no cows would be harmed. But as we got close, he spooked and receded back into one of the cactus caves. The immature part of my brain wanted me to try and bum rush the cactus brush, kick him out and try and shoot him, but with a scoped rifle, that's really not the best tactic, so I decided to settle in and wait him out. I spent most of the time scanning the cactus cave, just looking for movement, and I'd get a glimpse of it, but then it would be gone. But finally, after 20 minutes, the black blob that I wasn't sure was a pig when it was sitting still started to move and make its way back out into the open. Yes! Yes! Excited with my shot, I walked up pretty casually to the pig, but there was a big surprise waiting. Oh, right there, in the bush. Here it goes. Another two pigs sprung from the cactus brush. This is so awesome, man. Oh, right on. Man. That's a nice pig, dude. Oh my gosh. There go, two of them. Whoo. Look at that, though. It's got its ear missing. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Man, I cannot believe I hit that on the run. That was insane. You know, that I don't. That thing was full sprint. Full sprint. And I would never take a shot at like a deer on full sprint or anything. I know you're new to hunting, but it's completely unethical. But with pigs, they're so overrun and there's so many of them that it's a little bit of a different etiquette where you're trying to eradicate as much yeah. as you're trying to eat. And that's why I took that shot and it worked out and uh, got a nice one. Let's go check out the other one. I think they're both females. I only looked at the one for a second. I didn't even get a good look. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see it. That was an amazing shot. Thanks, man. Way to go, bud. Thanks. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Oh, my God. Dude, look at the tusks on this one. I mean, for a female, and those are, those are chompers right there. Absolutely beautiful. Now, if that isn't Hawaiian culture at its finest, I don't know what is. I can't wait to have a luau with this sucker. Good eating. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good stuff, man. Thank you. Let's pack them up. Let's get them out of here. Yep. Let's get started. Let's do it. Outdoors Hawaii Reef Conservation Corner. Hawaiian coral reefs account for upwards of 85% of all the coral reefs in the United States, with the remainder located around the Pacific Territories and the Florida Keys. These reefs are made up of millions of individual coral polyps that cluster together and form outer skeletons made of calcium carbonate. This skeleton provides protection for the coral and for flora as well as fauna that call this reef home. The coral reproduce and layer on top of older coral to eventually create a reef. Now coral reefs are a symbiotic environment with the coral providing structure and protection while the creatures that live in and around the coral provide food for the coral. These beautiful ecosystems are very sensitive to changes in the water and pollutants like fertilizers, sewage, and harmful ingredients in some sunscreens can cause bleaching which is a reaction where the coral will expel the algae living with them, which disrupts the delicate relationship between the two and is often fatal for the coral. Introduction of foreign species has also caused severe damage to this ecosystem, carrying diseases and crowding out native species. Several invasive fish species have been introduced that are now reducing populations of the native fish that aren't found anywhere else in the world. So to best protect this tropical treasure, limit your catch to only what you need and target invasives whenever possible. Don't put things in the ocean that don't belong like non-native aquarium fish, trash, or old fishing supplies. 
Litter on the beaches can get washed into the ocean and cause harm as well. One of our best tips is to check your sunscreen to make sure it doesn't contain any substances that could be harmful to the coral. And whenever possible, try not to touch the reef. This includes stepping on it while snorkeling or even hitting it with a boat anchor. Now that we know what we need to do to take better care of our coral reefs, join us on our spearfishing trip. I'm pretty nervous. Why are you nervous? We're on the swim team. It's the ocean. How hard could it be? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Just shooting a fish? We've, we've never done that before, but I bet it'll work out. Yeah. It is so pretty here, though. Them? I don't know who's them. They look and like they spearfish. He said the name on the phone, and I, I don't know that I know his name still. Kiyoki? Don't, don't, don't guess. Today's not a guessing <laughs> day. <laughs> don't. Don't do it. Don't. You're going to offend somebody. Yep. Kiyoki. <laughs> Hey, Kim. How's it going? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's, guys, bro? what's going on, man? I'm Kyle. Hans. I'm Jeff. I'm nice, to nice to meet you, Jeff. Hans, and what's your name? Jeff. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys ready to do this today? <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Tons of fun here. What does a good gun cost? Uh, these guns out in Hawaii, Hawaii uh, spring fishing gear, pricey out here. A uh, hundred centimeter gun is going to run you brand new $500 at least. Okay. Yeah, 40 to 500 so. You got to shoot a lot of fish to make up. Yeah, so the guns we got, me and Hans, uh, we got, I got like four guns. He's got like a pile of guns too, but our guns are paid over 10 times over. They pay dividend there. They'll feed you forever here. And uh, we make our living off the ocean here. So uh, I'll tell Jeff guns, not to break yours then. Yeah, <laughs> these guns uh, definitely uh, will pay a dividend. But, uh, so when you're swimming around here, you want to always carry a mid-body. Okay, mid Closer to the body. Uh, less resistance, close to the body. Mid body on the gun here, close to your body, swimming around. Less resistance, you also see where the tip is pointing at. So okay. you always can see there. Yeah, watch uh, your tip. So you're swimming around, hunting for fish there. What you're gonna wanna do there, as soon as you see, see that fish, the gun's gonna come out, extend out, all right? So how you hold this gun, how you wanna aim it, is uh, we like to say gangster style out here. One hand stretched out. So Just sideways? Like that. Uh, that's true gangster style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wanna do true gangster, try to go sideways here. It's normal gangster style. Yeah, I'll okay. tell you what, boys. You'll gain style points, but you'll miss all the time. So never do that, all right? But, <laughs> but one hand stretched out, all right, boys? How you aim the gun, you're going to want to aim off the tip there. Point and shoot kind of stuff, right? One of the things we were talking about is obviously sharks. On the news, we saw there was three tiger sharks spotted over here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do. Talk we, to me about sharks. How do you? We, we have sharks. Since you, know? you ask, since you ask, we'll talk about sharks. Out of the four of us, I feel like I'm the least likely to get bit. So, <laughs> All right. Actually, we, he's got to be faster than the slowest swimmer here today. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so, we got, so when we're going out, we've got a, uh, you said like a buddy, it's like a buddy system. Yeah, you always person? want to dive. Okay, shotgun kill. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's <laughs> than me, you know? The threat of sharks is something that most spear fishermen I talk to don't even concern themselves with. There is a lot of prep work getting all the gear ready and on. I'm good. Yeah, get on yeah, I've never been better. Now, Kiyoki, <laughs> when we get out there, I'll start showing you what to do, okay? <laughs> yeah. You got it, my brother. <laughs> and we spent a solid amount of time practicing our descent and pressurizing our ears. I'm gonna pop my ears, get a calm, pop. Every three feet, pop, 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 all the way down, right? Wait, watch how I do it. You guys try it. We did spot some sharks and this beautiful moray eel, but the curiosity about this underwater world took over my mind, and honestly, fear was nowhere to be found. I was fascinated by the amount of life we stumbled across, and Jeff and I found ourselves in full hunt mode and comfortable almost right out of the gate. After a few hours, I began to get the hang of which fish I was allowed to shoot at, and even had some close calls. Kiyoki and Hans were able to stick a couple of these beautiful fish, so at least we knew we had something for the grill. I began to feel a little bit seasick, so I headed in for a break, which set up Jeff to be the hero, and after this 45-foot successful dive, I'm not likely to live this down. About 35, 40 foot, and I was like, I'm just 35, gonna, 40 I'm foot. just gonna go down and get him, or, or pass out, I don't know. <laughs> I 
Yeah. But then I was 30 foot, 35 foot down. I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> and then I kick up and I'm looking up there and I'm like, please God, please God, please God. And I broke through the water. That is awesome, yeah. dude. Mission accomplished, man. For you got first, a fish there. For a first timer, first -timer. that's a big deal. Isn't yeah, it? it is, but not you know too what? bad getting fish on your first day. On your first day, it's not supposed to happen to have a shoot there. So really? You did great there, yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Jeff and I had a blast spear fishing, and the plan was to top off the day by learning to surf. On today's episode, we harvested wild pigs and a fish named the Table Boss. It's quite an experience just to see Hawaii, much less participate in hunting and fishing activities that are so rich with Hawaiian culture. Now I would be lying if I didn't say that the team and I were a little nervous about representing these experiences in a way that would make the wonderful people we met in Hawaii proud. Brother Kiyoki taught me about how protective the locals are over their coral reefs and the ocean surrounding Maui that they call their ice box. Now the island of Maui is less than 40 miles long and many of the people I encountered have never even been off of it. And Hawaii has such a secluded feeling because it's physically so far from the mainland. So when so many locals depend on the surrounding ocean to feed their family, it's really easy to put yourself in their shoes and see why many of them are taken back by a bunch of Michigan boys diving into their waters with big cameras and spear guns, with nothing more than my word to go off of that this show will do more good than harm to their precious icebox. So here are a few of the points that I want to make sure I get across. Go visit Hawaii. It's an absolutely wonderful place with incredible culture. And if you feel inspired to hunt access deer, wild pigs, or even go fishing with traditional equipment or spears, hire a local guide. Not only is it going to enhance your likelihood of success, a local guide is going to help you with making smart choices when it comes to picking a target. Invasive fish are a big problem for the Hawaiian reefs, and plenty of them make excellent table fare. So targeting invasives is a great way to have a fun day of fishing and remain respectful of those who call the island home. As always, it's important to never take more than you need and hold yourself and others around you accountable that absolutely nothing goes to waste. As sportsmen and women, we have a connection to our food that someone who has never hunted or fished can even remotely understand. In the book of John, Jesus said to his disciples, gather up all the leftover fragments so nothing may be lost. So the disciples gathered up the leftover scraps of bread after all had eaten and filled 12 baskets with the remaining barley loaf. A point I draw from the lesson Jesus taught the disciples is, like Hawaii, this entire earth is secluded. We have this one planet to live on, so we should all be defensive and protective over this beautiful blue planet we call home. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, Motor Trends back-to-back -back Truck of the Year. And by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. For this recipe, we're going to be cooking candied blackberry wild boar backstrap. For step-by-step -step directions for this recipe and many others, visit thegreenwayoutdoors.com. Seems weird for me to bring this wild boar that was in warm weather all the way to freeze out on your porch, but I'm glad we did because you got a pretty good recipe here. And what does it consist of? It is a blackberry jam, rosemary, and soy sauce. So you marinate it and then you baste it. It's pretty good. You just put it in a bag overnight in the fridge? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you take out all the air so you 
It's gonna flip it. It just sits, it's coated in it. It's pretty good. Nice. Well, it looks well covered. It kind of looks like a gory mess from like The Walking Dead, but let's cook it. <laughs> Start by preheating your grill to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. When cooking wild pig, I like to use the hickory smoked wild game pellets from Traeger. Then you're gonna take your soy sauce, rosemary, and jam mixture and coat the pig every 10 minutes while it's cooking. You wanna make sure the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which takes about 45 to 50 minutes. Then pull it from the grill and let it rest for 10 minutes. Slice and serve. The smoky flavor that you can just smell even before you taste has me so excited about this. Stop talking, let's eat it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's awesome about it is it kind of has like a sausagey casing to it now from the smoking yeah, yeah. and the grill. So it's like got that crunchy outside that's so good and full of flavor. Mmm. <laughs> that's good. My gosh, is that good. That was great. That crunchy shell full of flavor. The basting really works to bring like that sweet flavor and that excellent taste out in the pork. It's almost got like a, like a skin on the outside. What I was really curious of is, would there be any game flavor? You know what I mean? When you try wild boar, you hear good things and bad things. And these ones were kind of leaner, obviously. So we kind of had to fold it over to make this work, yeah. but. They weren't huge and the smaller ones didn't have better flavor. And this is like a pork tenderloin recipe almost, yet it's the back strap actually. And that's the spine meat along the sides. This was excellent. Now, wild boar are a problem everywhere, not just in Texas not just in Hawaii where we got them. So make sure you go out, harvest them, eat them. Don't listen to what anybody says. Try this <laughs> recipe. I promise you, you will love it. They're made of pork. They really are. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay green.